Moving on, let's go to the Golden Hour new episode and see how Eric was able to talk about his experience at the Comedy Mothership or if he was able to do it at all. I have a fear he didn't have an opportunity to do it because he felt guilty that Brendan or Chris haven't been invited yet. But let's see if I'm right. Let's see if I'm right. Let's play it here. Recent episode, was it number 27? Or was it? It can't be 27. They must have more episodes than that, right? It's a golden hour episode. Oh, it is number 27. Cool. Um, let's see Eric Griffin if they be able to talk about his experience at Austin, in Austin, at Jerrigan's Comedy Mothership. Come on, come on, come on. Now <laughs> All right. Yes, fast forward this. Fast forward that. Amazing. Okay, cool. Let's go here. Let's see what he says. He was getting a shake at Erewhon. Like a in LA. I can't wait to see what hat he's wearing too. Um, and then Eric just got in from Austin. You were at the mothership? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, um, and then Eric just got in from Austin. You were at the mothership. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That okay wasn't the most enthusiastic okay. That doesn't look like an entirely happy man. But Finn, I think it's more selfish. I I think Chris is happy for Eric, but it just bums him out when he hears the comedy mothership because it reminds him of how far his star has fallen. And the fact that he's got, you know, fucking numerous documentaries on YouTube. I think there's like more than three hour long documentaries on YouTube talking about how much of a pest uh, Chris Lea is, verging on the point of being a fucking cult leader, which he embraces. Um, and a diddler, allegedly, who knows? So maybe every time he hears a comedy mothership, he's just like, oh man, I'm never going to perform there. I'm never going to be in superhero movies. He just. It just bums him out. So I think he's happy for Eric, but he's just more bummed out for himself because you know comedians they only think about themselves, right? Okay. And and you said it was amazing. It's fantastic. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I, I can't wait to see it. And you uh, I can't wait to see it. You ain't gonna go there. You uh this guy, I mean you are just great club, never been there. His hands in pockets just Yeah, dude. I parked at listen. What? I parked at the airport. That's how Oh. Because I knew it was gonna be like this. Like what? Cause I cause I, I had to do like I did kill Tony last night. Yeah. Then I had to just really early flight. I uh -huh. didn't sleep well last night. Of course. You got to LAX, three hundred dollars for parking. But why? Why did you? Why did you park at LAX? Why didn't you just take an Uber or something like that? Because it would take. Oh, what up? I it guess would take so. Forever. Yeah. You know I what guess I mean? so. Yeah. Wants to be on time. Yeah. Well. I mean. You know. I mean, how am I here before you? Yeah, that's crazy. You said there's a nightmare one on one. So yeah, that doesn't get mean, out and walk. That doesn't mean you go oh, I do something daddy else. Gets a shake. Oh no, daddy got to shake. Yeah, what is I that shake? Go. What's it's that? That daddy, that daddy humor is so bizarre, man. It was funny for a very small time, a small amount of time, and then it kind of died straight away. Beat it like a dead horse. Buy it. No, it's good. It's good. It, it looks good. I've had him. What is nice. it? It's time for a haircut too, huh? No, it looks good. No, bro, I'm growing it, it out. Well, don't man. grow it out, Things right? Have changed. Yeah, but don't Things grow it out. I'm polo guy now. That's fine. It's some uh, polo shirt's guy. nice. No, but see how you can't rift. Instead of riffing on the joke about his hair, because he's probably thin skinned and doesn't take it too well, he then just switches it to the polo. Just riff. Come on, man. I don't know. Talk about how schlobby Eric looks, or talk about the fact that, you know, Delia looks like a vampire. He hasn't got any blood in his fucking skin. Come on, do something. This, this, these wings that are, yeah, bro. That's the <laughs> Did you have a Red Bull or bro. something? Look at me. Yeah, all right. Thanks, man. What, what's with the shake? What's in it? Oh, you got know. it because it matches your shirt? Yeah. Cuck boy, shake. dude. Cuck boy, man. Do look, what? look, he just sits there, huh? Come on, Brendan. Riff back your comedian. Come on, play, play. Tennis match of insults. But, 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 come on. Yeah. You cuck boy? No. <laughs> you cuck boy matching your drink with your shirt, dude? Yes, thanks. <laughs> Where's your coffee? We're here, bro. Mm -hmm. All right, dude. So what's up, man? Okay. Great podcast. Never met him. Jesus Christ, the vibes are fucking awful, aren't they? <laughs> what's up, fellas? You were, uh, how was Austin? <laughs> we Did just I miss it. all this? He said it's amazing. No, but he, he not really. We talked about it off camera. He It'd said be it was funny amazing. if he came back. They talked about it off camera. I like how they're both talking for Eric and not letting him say what he wants to say. And he obviously doesn't want to say it because he doesn't want to make them feel bad. What a weird 
little vibe that's going on. I was like, oh, no. horrible. No, 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 he no, said it was great. Everyone said Well, it's you know great. it's not yeah. horrible. Yeah. No, of course yeah. not. Brendan tried to overcompensate and act like he, he's cool. Amazing. Um, just even the, the just the green room alone is just amazing. It was wow, a vibe. Really? Was that was there a hang? No, you, no, you, no, you, you haven't mean, been there yet. No, I haven't yeah, been there. Right. No, I, I need to get out there. <laughs> is that you quite love? Got enough beverages. <laughs> ah, he's got this shake thing, energy drink, two waters for Crystal Lea, and this, you know, uh, what's your thing called? A cold brew. Somebody on the Reddit was saying that how they think Brendan was on Addies on this. He was really jittery and excitable and shit. And just ranting and stuff, rambling. For guys and girls out there who have taken Adderall, I don't never taken, so I don't know what the what what to look for. Do you think Brenda's on Addies on here in this show? Yeah. No, but they got these two like the two TVs for the two different rooms. Uh-huh. The lights are in there, so when the light yeah. comes on, you can change the sound for the two different TVs, whichever room you want to listen to oh, in the wow. green room. You get there's a Bluetooth where so where somebody can. Have music in the green room from their phone. Yeah, they really thought this out. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, of course, he's a comedian. Well, the Rogan attention to detail. You know? Yeah, but in that, the places like the art on the wall yeah, yeah, and the yeah. bar from The Shining, the whole yeah. setup from yeah, The Shining. It's called the Miss Mitzi's bar. That's mm-hmm. so cool. What man. do you mean from The Shining? From the movie The Shining. They the literally did it like that. He t- took Inspired? the exact copy from that. That's funny. That's yeah. what it took so long to build. To be honest. But why is The Shining? He just likes the way that looks. I, I don't know. He's so balls deep in The Shining. I guess. That's I mean, it's weird. a classic movie. Yeah, no, it's a great bar in a movie, and the movie's great. Yeah. Just, just funny yeah. That, to do that to a comedy club. But look, look at how they're taking the piss now. They're trying not to, like, give the guy props. These guys, man, oh, my God. It must hurt, because clearly they're both as funny, but I don't know. Yeah, it's a bar. That's that, I mean, the place looks amazing. I saw the drum footage, but yeah, people you, love it. You see five, all the boys? Five sold-out shows. Yeah. Did you see all the boys there? I heard you crushed it, by the way. No, I, people, I, d- for whatever reason, text DM and text me when you crush it. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did, <laughs> all right, I'm not. Not there. Did you do shows? Weird ownership thing as well, by the way, doing this. I don't know why he's mentioning that. Because people were, you, you, they were your shows, right? Yeah, this is my show. On the weekend? Yeah. And uh, so in- I did two shows Friday, two shows Saturday, and a show Sunday, and then I did Kill Tony on Monday. Did anybody pop on your shows or no? No. Oh, cool. No, so no, so no. it's, so. So who opened? Uh, this kid, Lucas McCreary, mm-hmm. funny, skinny, funny dude. I'm surprised and you. And then David Lucas. Oh, I was going to say, I'm surprised cool. you use our yeah, boy David. Yeah, for sure. Our boy. Our boy. <laughs> I love how he's taking ownership of David Lucas' success when David Lucas has been on Kill Tony crushing it for a while, doing his own thing also. There's no the only association that he has with him is like on the road and shit. But he's trying to act like he took responsibility. Like honestly, it's so gross. Yeah. Killer. Well, there's a thing too, is like I think you know, I think Rogan wants people to use his in house people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not just bring in Yeah, he's trying yeah. Well, exists. why wouldn't you use them? They're great. Right? No, no, but I yeah. mean, you might have people you want to. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, yeah I get, I get. So, but yeah. he's like trying to like build something mm. in the community. Oh, okay. So when he gives you a weekender, you have to use the people that he has on on deck, or he recommends you people, or he just puts people there. That makes sense, though. To be fair, that that makes sense because if you're doing an all weekender and your headline is set, you kind of you're kind of going to see Eric Griffin anyway. So him bringing his own people doesn't make sense. They might also have people that are already there and comfortable with the space and are legit funny anyway because the main attraction is Eric anyway. And also it gives the comics opportunity to coming up, a chance to kind of build and grow and learn. That's actually a good idea, to be fair. I'm sure people, I'm sure there are comedians that don't like that. I'm sure there are. There are some comedians that think, no, I trust my guys better or they're under, or they or they kind of think my guys um, kind of, uh, what's that thing called? my guys know how to prep for me. Like they kind of build it up, right? I'm sure there are some comics that don't like it. They can be like, no, I'd rather have my own guys because I feel like when my guys perform, I know what their comedy is like. I know what kind of room I'm going to walk into because they prime it or they prep in a certain way, blah, blah, blah. If that makes sense, I'm pretty sure. But I like Rogan's idea. I, I, I think that's a really cool idea to be fair. I'd love that even in nightclubs. It'd be sick if that happened in nightclubs because that's legitimately how you build up residencies. That's how it used to be in the past. In the past, nightclubs would have resident DJs and resident DJs were basically like past comics where you basically play there week in, week out. Um, And then sometimes you'll have your own night that you do during the week. But on the weekends, they'll invite a big DJ to come and play. And usually the big DJ might have their own DJs they want to play with them, but they'll say, nah, you have to use our DJs. And they'll kind of, quote unquote, warm up for the big person to play. Then when the big person plays their main peak hour slot, the residents then take over afterwards. 
So you have an opportunity to kind of have resident DJs play in front of an audience, play in front of an an audience maybe bigger than they can only attract themselves. Maybe you have the opportunity to gain new fans, um, you know, and it kind of gives up the DJ too an opportunity to walk into a room that's hot and ready to go when they play their peak set. But nowadays, because of money and shit, and you know maybe clubs aren't as full as before. The clubs would rather give the headline DJ the opportunity to fill the entire lineup um, with their people or heavy hitters in general and then have people so you don't have any residents you have either really big DJs playing opening sets or you get them to bring their own people yeah but That's it's like cool. you know all the show uh, while my show was sold out uh, the other room was sold out right, too so people right. are really into it's popping there yeah, huh? it's, yeah. Well, it's, yeah I mean, <laughs> it's new it's fresh it's the new thing uh, why does it keep undermining it with a new thing too it's it's going to be the, it's going to be the fre- it's going to be the number one club for a very long time it's not because it's new and it's fresh it's because it's the best and because rogan's legit and he's got you know he's got his reps he's got his contacts he's popular and stuff but he's gonna get guests down there that probably no other club can get and here's this guy that is like this influential guy yeah and he built this you know playhouse Mm -hmm. that you know he's not concerned he's not concerned about making money he's concerned about building a good reputation and taking care of the comics like the amount he pays those comics is insane yeah so it's you know so it's like Look at him. He wants to gossip about the money. <laughs> Already. <laughs> He's looking at Chris. Chris is fucking so pissed off. Chris, is think- Chris, I think, is more pissed off that he has to do this and this is where his life is. Even though he deserves it. If what they're saying is true about Chris Lee and his documentaries, he deserves this and more. He should be happy he has a career still. A career, as Brenner would say. He should be happy he has one. But, you know, these guys, they feel like they can do no wrong. So he probably thinks he's entitled to more. But I feel like Chris is more pissed off that he's having to do this. This, he has to do this podcast to pay his bills, to look after his kids, to look after his wife. Like, this is a necessary part of his, you know, money making and ability to look after himself and his family. And at one point he was up there and now he's all the way down here figuratively. Of course, it's his own fault. But I think this is why he's more pissed off. And Brendan here trying to act unbothered and talk about the money and gossip and all that stuff. And he's like, shut the fuck up, please. Like, he's like, really? And he's just like, he has a spot. I mean, <laughs> I get it. Maybe he'll expand and go to like different cities. Which I doubt would be it. Great. I, I mean, maybe. I, you see how, do you notice something, by the way? In times gone by, Brendan would have chimed in a lot more with like, yeah, I was just texting with Rogan now. I was just talking to him. I talk on the phone to him every day. Remember that period? This is why I believe, again, this is just a theory. I have no evidence, no information, nothing. I'm a fucking donut speaking into a fucking iPhone, into a fucking, you know, decent mic, but with shitty settings and stuff in front of my bookcase. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I have a feeling that Brendan and Joe Rogan aren't as close as they once were. And I feel like it started from that, bald guy that slanging dick comment that he made ages ago i think since then the relationship has never really recovered and of course things have transpired since then the annie leader and drug walk brendan trying to fuck kalila behind bobby lee's back allegedly him using joe rogan's name to kind of bully bobby lee on the phone i legitimately think all those things added to the rift and to the gap and obviously if you believe bgl rogan got on the phone to brendan and basically berated him for using his name for getting involved in the drama um i have a theory that brendan has maybe asked personally rogan if he can go and perform at the club and he's told him no you're not funny enough so i think all those things have kind of led to it so i think they're not as close anymore this is why you don't hear brendan in this instance chiming in saying yeah i was just on the phone to rogan i just text him we speak every day Uh, he always had to flex that but he's not saying that this time around he's just commenting like normal but he's reserving judgment, talking in you know general, gen, uh, gen, generalities, gen, generalities. Oh my god, my words can't say it properly. You know what I'm saying, too. It is well, bad. I was thinking about him today. It's like <laughs> if you had that much. I was thinking about him today. See, he didn't say I was talking today. Say I was thinking about him. Peep game. I mean, he's doing exactly. It's like the the scene here crashed, right? And the hangout was is done. It's not here very yeah. much anymore. I don't like that comment. Let's rewind that again. I don't like that comment. It's like the the scene here crashed, right? And the hangout was, is done. It's not here very much yeah. anymore. And he was like, I don't like that comment because he's trying to insinuate that the scene crashed because of cancel culture. That's what he basically keeps saying. 
Remember you went on that podcast and said, oh, they got Chris Lee and Brian Callan got cancelled for bullshit reasons. No, they didn't. Callan got accused of rape. Or Chris Lee got accused first of being a diddler. Of, you know, it was an underage type of thing, first of all, which it wasn't really underage, but basically being a creep. And then obviously all the cultist stuff and all the abuse stuff, mental abuse and the cheating, all that malarkey. And then Brian Callan got accused of rape. Neither of these guys have offered up a strong defense against what they were accused of. So if everything got taken away from them because they couldn't defend themselves and because no one believed them if they even did defend themselves, then it just is what it is. It wasn't like they got cancelled for something egregious or something that didn't really happen. And then the scene that he's saying that died, that was a toxic scene. That's what kind of allowed those guys to get away with what they could get away with at the time. And then Joe moved and didn't want to repeat clearly the scene from LA and went to start something new and he cut all those toxic guys off. That's why they're not over there. So the scene didn't crash. What he's basically saying is that he's lost the protection of his guide, his mentor, his flipping Cody, you know what I mean? The guy that brought him in, like Joe. Joe basically got him, because he knew Joe, he got a chance to perform at the comedy store because he wouldn't have been before because he wasn't past, so he wasn't funny enough. But now that Joe Rogan's left, he's not protection anymore. He's literally on his own, holding the fort down allegedly, and things aren't sweet anymore, especially with Brian Callan's accusations and his relationship with Chris, I'm sure that's left a stink on him. Maybe some clubs don't, maybe fuck with him as much as before. Maybe certain people won't come on the podcast because of his association with Chris and Brian. So things have changed, you know, for the worse probably, day to day. But it's not because the scene crashed and shit. No, it's because all the good guys left, um, all the good murderers, quote unquote, left, and there was nothing else. I mean. It's like, cool, I'm going to go, do it my, I miss those days. I'm going to go build my own. Yeah. That's it. If I had his money, that's exactly what I do. Oh, I'm missing that. I'm going to do this. Can you imagine if Brendan opened his own comedy club? <laughs> that would be a very Brendan Shaw thing to do. You're not funny, so let me open up a comedy club so I can perform there. So, so I'm always booked and I always sell out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like nobody else yeah. can do that. Yeah. Chris Delia is so pissed off. He's like, is this my life? Yeah, this is what happens, mate. When you start texting, you know, girls in high school, unfortunately, this is one of the things that may happen. You know, the risk re v reward thing is crazy because on one side, the rewards are whatever the rewards are if you're into it. But the risk involved are that you get excommunicated from the scene. You kind of become the, you know, the name no one wants to mention, no one wants to stand next to. Someone even said in my comments, Remember, I made a I made a comment about Brian Callan. He said, "Oh, I want." Remember the comment Brian Callan said about he was going to the mothership, and then he went to Austin to do the Minds Festival thing. Came back, but never said anything about Joe Rogan's club. And somebody in my comment said, "Oh no, Brian Callan was there." Someone said Brian Callan did perform at the mothership, but I guess Joe told him he wasn't allowed to post about it. So he secretly performed. He was there. Maybe the Instagram account didn't record him. Or something is strange, but someone said he was actually there. <laughs> Imagine that. You have to, if you perform there, you're just not allowed to post about it or talk about it. <laughs> I'd rather not perform. It's definitely pretty uh, cool. It's definitely <laughs> look, man. <laughs> Listen, I can't deal with your nonsense today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fresh off a plane. I'm fresh off a plane. Fresh off Spirit Airlines. You, you know what I mean? And you, so you, I'm just kind of like, you got that fresh you have enough. Let's, Chris is kind of Chris is definitely sad. Keep Let's keep yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got that fresh off the plane nasal voice. Yeah, yeah. I had my smile. Yeah, Chris wanted to change the subject there. It makes it 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 bums him out here about the comedy store. The my allergies were kicking up Oof. today. Oh, they're popping right Something now. Something about like and then Austin was just. And they had, they had, Chris is so bummed. Nice Look at Chris. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's like you know, it's like flex. <laughs> it's so funny. No, it's, it's them. You know? So was it? Uh, so what else did you do besides the shows there in Austin? Just nothing. I play video games in my room. No barbecue, know. nothing. Oh yeah, I went oh, down yeah. and got some barbecue. From David where? Lucas? Jay Blacks? No, I went to this. Uh, no, I didn't. We didn't do. I didn't even see. David Rogan. Lucas will be like, "Oh, let's go get get lunch." He said to, when I was in Austin last time. I was in Austin. I was playing the theater. Yeah. He was like, "Let's go get lunch," and I was like, "Okay, where?" And he sent me this link to this place that like you only go to dinner there. Like it was the most beautiful place. And I'm like, <laughs> "Bro, let's just order at a counter," you know? Yeah. Um. So we ended up going to this, bu this bullshit place that was actually good. But David but knows yeah. his shit. Yeah, yeah he knows his shit. shit. Yeah, he knows his shit is what I'm saying. Yeah, but downtown. I mean, downtown Austin would be. It would be. Uh, 
if it wasn't for the homeless shelter that's down there. Oh, really? And the zombies that just walk. Is it around. that bad, really? Yes. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's it's worse terrible. than here. It yeah. is? Yeah, no, yeah. it's not. not. Not as far as Skid Row. Now, I'm saying we're sitting here like around Hollywood, yeah. like around the comedy store. It's not bad. Around, off 6th Street? Like yeah, okay, world, okay, okay. Off okay. that 6th Street? Yeah, 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 I watch World's, hip, uh, World Star Hip Hop every morning. Got you. There's gotcha. always it's a weird. fighter you know, shooting. It's bum weird bum. that like. Uh, when he does that inflection, crazy. What we do here is we have this sort of like hear no evil, see no evil, say no evil mm. situation about the homeless. So as long as we push them away mm. and they're like out of sight, out of mind, out of sight, out of mind. But in Austin, like right there, like all the stuff's going on, yeah. and they're just there sleeping on the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. Part of the community. Oh, I got you. It's got part you. Of, exactly. It's yeah, part of the community. It's, of the- oh, it's like a Portland thing, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not yeah. good. <laughs> Chris is like fidgeting. He's moving around all over the place. Like that comedy mothership conversation really fucks with his soul, his spirit, a psyche. He is not happy in the slightest, man. He's like, fuck. I have to do this shitty fucking podcast. I can't perform at the comedy mothership. I'm fucking excommunicated from anybody. I'm not going to be on Rogan anytime soon. And I have to do this to pay for my fucking G-Wagon, to pay for my trainers, to pay for my, you know, he's got a baby on the way, or he's already maybe had one, so he's got two. Like, shit. (laughs) He's got like an expensive dog also. That dog looks very expensive. (laughs) Oh, what a life. What a life. But, you know, what are we supposed to do? I don't know what to do. Well, yeah, what are you supposed to do? I mean, what are you supposed to do? Well, you leave California and vote the same way. That's what you get. You mean in Austin? Yeah. Did they vote the same way? Yeah. Well, in Austin, Austin's but not Texas. super liberal. No, not Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. no. Don't know you're yeah. twisted. No, but the no. Texas, you think Texas, Texas is not going to change cause, just because of Austin? Uh, I mean, no. I don't know. Maybe in fucking. Why would you ask Brendan that? What does he know? <laughs> Austin's always been liberal. That's what yeah, people yeah, forget. Yeah, yeah. It's just saying. way more now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um. <laughs> Awkward silence. This podcast is awful, man. Who listens to this stuff? Like, imagine being a King of the Sting fan with Fear of War and listens to this stuff. This is like terrible. And it's not none of their faults. It's just that none of them want to be there. They're all there for the money. Eric isn't really friends with Brendan, so he's there for the money. Brendan wants to be Chris D'Elia's best friend. Br- Brendan would love it if Chris D'Elia saw him, how Chris, how they used to be with Cal- No, Brendan would love to be Chris D'Elia's Brian Callan. That's what he wants. He wants to be Chris D'Elia's new Brian Callan. But I don't think Chris D'Elia wants to have Brendan like that as a friend. Brendan kind of forced his way into being one of Chris's close friends by always being the one around him. But Chris wants to be up there. I mean, he wants to be with the Hollywood guys. He wants to be, I mean, he was, he was with Eminem and shit. Eminem co-signs. That's what he wants to be in. He wants to be like, he wants to be what Andrew Santino's doing. That's what, yeah. That's what Chris Alea wants. Chris Alea wants to do what Andrew Santino's does. Andrew Santino knows um, Jasper Taco from Odd Future. He hangs around with all those cool LA guys. He's in um, that Little Dicky series, right? He's part of like the cool, young, kind of LA circuit guys. He does serious roles, does some comedic roles. I think wasn't Andrew Tantino in fucking, um, wasn't he on that show? Uh, oh, what's that show, comedy show it's called? You know, I forgot what I'm talking about here. But anyway, I, I know what I'm talking about. I think in general, Eric, obviously, sorry, Chris sees himself in that way. Or if he doesn't, he sees himself more as like an actor comedic actor Hollywood actor before he got cancelled he was trying to be in fucking superhero he wanted to be an action movie star that's why he was working out so much and shit so there's probably roles in the pipeline that he could kind of do now look at what he's doing maybe he had, maybe he had a potential to do like an Amazon series where he played like a detective or something like a thriller where he plays like you know legit like he probably had those things in the works and then he got replaced in that zombie movie by Tig Notaro and that's been over since that but that's the face of a man that's like just realizing now just how far his star has fallen. Like, fuck. This is my life now. Like, this is my life. Well, let's move to what? That doesn't even make any. Isn't that kind of weird, though, that if some place is voting liberal. Uh-huh. It- okay, no politics talks with him. But yeah, you get it. You, get, you guys get what I mean. You guys get what 